Oh, hey, my Breath of the Wild review. How's that doing? Son of a- One eternity later. What up, guys? I'm Gallant Havoc, and after a year of uploading absolutely jack shit, I am back with my second review. Apologize for that. Adulting. Working. Parenting. Stuff. Now, in my last review, I covered the absolutely fantastic game that was The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and I left off with a question. Is Breath of the Wild better than Ocarina of Time? Well, here and now, I will answer that question. Honestly, I still find Ocarina of Time to be the superior game. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, hear me out. Sure, I may very well be biased on the matter, but to be honest, Ocarina of Time gave me a better kick of time. And here's why. Let's start with the obvious. Gameplay. Now, among Zelda fans, Ocarina of Time is usually the be-all, end-all Zelda game. It revolutionized not only how Zelda games were played, but how pretty much every game in existence came to play, especially among action and adventure games. The combat itself was diverse enough to never get too stale. You could swing your sword in several different ways depending on which way you tilted the control stick. You had two styles of swords to choose from. You had the Kokiri Sword and the Legendary Master Sword for your one-handed swords, and the Giant's Knife and the Big Goron Sword for your two-handed swords. The Big Goron Sword being the indestructible version of the Giant's Knife, which only broke in 30 hits. Not the greatest, but for some reason the Big Goron Sword did more damage than the Master Sword. I guess size does matter. Or at least it did in those days. But it wasn't just about swords. The game offered up a wide arsenal of items to help you through your journey. You had your bow and arrow, the slingshot, the hook shot, long shot, bombs, bomb shoes, deku sticks, and the incredibly useful magic spells, Din's Fire, Pharaoh's Wind, and Nader's Love. And every item? Useful! They didn't just sit in your inventory, not getting used, ever, for however long. There was a purpose for everything and enough room in the game to use it all. Every enemy had a weakness, and the many items exploited those weaknesses, especially among the bosses. Hey, King Dodongo, hungry? Eat a bomb! Hey, Volvania, care to dance? Cause it's hammer time! You can't touch this. And let me just say, that mini boss with Dark Link remains to this day my favorite battle in all of gaming. Anyway, Back to the items. Even had a level of customization to your appearance, wearing tunics that suited the environment. Red for heat resistance, blue for breathing underwater. And the mirror shield, which remains to be my favorite shield in Zelda history. Now the one item that was in Ocarina of Time that was so important, the Ocarina of Time itself. You can use it freely, make some cool ass tunes, while also using the songs provided in the game as a tool, and if you so will it, music! As a weapon! God, it was so satisfying to play Saria's song, the Song of Storms, the Song of Time on that thing. Of course, the first Ocarina you get in the game, which has plenty of sentimental value, gets thrown away for the Ocarina of Time. Thanks, Link! Saria gave that to you like it was her heart, dick. But I digress. The items aside, the game offered a wide, expansive world to explore. At the time. It ain't no Skyrim. When you first come out to Hyrule Field, it's like, DAMN, LOOK AT THAT OPEN SPACE! Trust me, at the time, it was truly beautiful to see. Throughout the open world, you had a variety of dungeons to explore, each with their own unique theme and twist. It all felt very rewarding and atmospheric. And of course, the Water Temple. And I'm one of those weirdos that did not find it hard at all. Of course, I played it close to a hundred times, not to brag or anything. Personally, my favorites were the Forest Temple and the Shadow Temple. So dark. So creepy. I love it. And every location had its own unique song, which to this day are all catchy as hell. The Lost Woods, Goron City, the Temple of Time, Ganondorf's Castle. Oh, so many good ones. As you can tell, 
I'm a sucker for Zelda music. Hence, my entrance music. Now we come to my favorite part of this game and review, the story. I gotta tell you guys, it has yet to be surpassed. If you haven't played the game, you've been living under a rock. But, spoiler warning. Ocarina of Time starts with you being thrust into the standard Zelda story. Bad guy threatens the world, little kid in green has to save it and the princess. But this time there's some wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. After you complete the first three dungeons as a kid and collect the three sacred stones, you're sent back to Hyrule Castle where you find that Ganondorf has pretty much taken over. So Link takes the Ocarina of Time, replacing Sarga's dick, and goes to the Temple of Time to get the Master Sword. He's sealed in the temple for seven years, and when he wakes up, he's an adult, and the world's an utter mess. Ganondorf's wrecked shit, Castle Town's a ruin, the people are now zombie re-deads, which are the stuff of nightmares. <coughs> and you have to do six more dungeons, and then defeat Ganondorf to rescue Zelda. And when you defeat Ganondorf, you are met with the big guy, the big bad, the OG Zelda villain, Ganon. The Ganondorf tennis match was awesome enough. Now you get to throw down with his monstrous transformation in an epic battle to save Hyrule. Oh, it gets my blood pumping just talking about it! And the ending of the game just feels so satisfying because of it. That's the one thing that not just Ocarina of Time, but other Zelda games get right. The utter satisfaction of saying, I did it. I saved the princess. I saved Hyrule. A lot of games these days don't have that same feeling, and that is what makes this game truly good if you ask me an immersive story experience that throws you in and makes you feel things a lot of things <laughs> and that is why ocarina of time to this day remains my favorite game of all time and rightfully so it pioneered so many things we see in games now and in many cases has yet to be beat so in closing i am giving the legend of zelda ocarina of time a gallant rating of over nine thousand out of five Hang on, what, what did I just say? I meant five. A gallant rating of five out of five. So, in closing, I ask you, the viewer, what did you think of it? Was it your favorite Zelda game of all time? If not, what was? I can pretty much guarantee there's a lot of you that would prefer Majora's Mask over this, or even Wind Waker, and I can appreciate that. Hell, I might even review those in the not too distant future. Or all of them. Maybe seven years from now. <laughs>